Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back to the lectures on engineering mathematics 1 and this is lecture number 15 and today we will be discussing about uh, composite functions and homogeneous functions. So what are the composite functions? So if we consider here a uh, function z is equal to f x y a function of two variables uh, x and y and we uh, let that this x depends on t. So, x is a function of, of uh, phi t and here y is also a function of t which we are denoting by uh, psi t. Or this could be that this function x is a function of two variables again u and v and y is a function uh, again of two variables u and v. Let us call this equation number 1, here the equation number 2 and this is equation number 2 prime. Then the equations here 1 or uh, and this 2 together or 1 with this 2 prime together are said to be uh, to define z as composite function of uh, t or in this case uh, composite function of u and v. So, here uh, what uh, basically we will be discussing here uh, if we want to get for example, the derivative of this z function with respect to, to t because in this first case when we are taking equation number 1 and equation number 2 then this z depends on x and y but uh, the x and y again depends on uh, uh, t. So, basically this z is a function of, of t and then we can uh, define here the derivative of z with respect to t directly. So, we will derive a formula how to get the derivative of this uh, z without substituting this x and y here in this function and then making this as a function of t and then taking the derivative, but we will find uh, a direct formula which will use the partial derivatives of this function f which is a function of two variables x and y and also here the x and y are the functions of phi and psi uh, both are the functions of t and we will also make use of the derivative of these functions to get the derivative of this uh, z directly without substituting this x and y in terms of t in this function f x y. And the same scenario we have when we have this equation 1 z is equal to f x y uh, with equations x is equal to phi u v and uh, y is equal to psi u v. So, let us take the first case uh, let us uh, z possess continuous partial derivatives or we can also uh, take this assumption that this z is equal to f x y is differentiable. So, this f x y is a differentiable function. And then we also let that x is equal to phi t and y is equal to psi t they uh, possess uh, continuous derivatives or again we can assume that they are uh, differentiable functions. So, in that case we will derive this formula which says that we can get this dz over dt. So, the ordinary derivative of z with respect to t which uh, makes sense now because uh, x and y are functions of t. So, basically this z is uh, a function of t alone. So, in this case this formula says that we can get this uh, ordinary derivative dz over dt is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x. So, we are making use of that this f is a function of two variables x and y. So, we will take here the partial derivatives of this f with respect to x and multiply it by the derivative of x with respect to t. So, it is again ordinary derivative because x is a function of one variable t and then uh, this is a chain rule again. So, plus this because z is a function of y as well. So, we will have here the partial derivative with respect to y and multiplied by dy over dt. So, we will derive this formula now. So, we take that this z is equal to f x y and x is a function of phi t and y is a function of t. 
as denoted by psi t and this is a composite function which we call as per the definition. And since we have assumed already the differentiability of all these functions z uh, phi and psi, then differentiability of z will imply that we can write down this uh, delta z is equal to del x delta x plus del y uh, delta y and psi 1 delta x plus psi 2 delta y. And if we divide this uh, expression both the sides by delta t then what we will get here the delta z over delta t and this delta x divided by delta t here again we have delta y divided by delta t and it is dx and dy will be also divided by delta t. And now if we take the limit as delta t goes to 0 then what will happen? So, delta t goes to 0 means delta x uh, goes to 0 and delta y goes to 0 because this x and y they are functions of uh, function of t and if there is no variation in t so naturally the x and y variation in x and y will be also 0. So, as delta t goes to 0 meaning delta x goes to 0 and delta y goes to 0. So, when we take the limit now as delta t goes to 0 in this expression here. So, this delta z over delta t as per the definition of the of the derivative of z will be like d z over d t and this will remain as it is we are not touching this uh, del z over del x and then we have here delta x over delta t. So, again this is the derivative of x with respect to uh, t. So, we get here d x over d t similarly here again we have delta y over delta t which will become here d y over d t and these terms so, assuming again that these uh, parcel deriv uh, these derivatives exist and they are finite numbers. So, this when uh, delta x and delta y uh, go to 0. So, this epsilon will go to 0 and this epsilon 2 will go to 0 and then these expressions here uh, epsilon delta x over delta t and this epsilon delta y over delta t they both will go to 0. So, we ha we have only this uh, these three terms here. So, d z over d t we can find out directly in terms of the partial derivatives of z and the ordinary derivatives of x and y. So, the differentiation of the composite functions when we have uh, this more general case that x and y they also depend on u and v uh, functions of two variables. In that case uh, the formula will become that so we can prove similarly as above. So, this del z over del u. So, now the partial derivatives here because the x and y they are uh, the functions of two variables uh, u and v. So, we will have here the partial derivative of z with respect to u without substituting all these into this function and then getting this partial derivative. We can use this formula to get the partial derivative of this z with respect to u is equal to the partial derivative of z with respect to x and partial derivative of x with respect to u plus partial derivative of z with respect to y and partial derivative of y with respect to u again because we are uh, differentiating partially z with respect to u. So, here the u will come and here also the u will come. Similarly, for del z over del v now the similar formula, but instead of this u it will be replaced by v. So, what is important if we are differentiating here with respect to u then this uh, u will appear both the places and if we are differentiating with respect to v here. So, then this v will appear at uh, these places here when we are taking the partial derivative of x with respect to to u and here with respect to v. Well, so moving next let us uh, solve some problems based on this. So, for example, we have this function z is equal to x y x is a function of uh, t. So, which is uh, defined here as x is equal to cos t and then y is a function of uh, t again which is denoted by y is equal to sin t. And then we want to find here what is d z over d t. So, one direct way would be that we substitute this x and y here in this function and then we will have z as a function of t 
which we can differentiate to get dz over dt. But we will follow the uh, idea of the composite functions that z is a function of x y and x is a function of t and y is a function of t with the formula derived above. So, that formula says that d x over d t will be the we can have here with partial derivative with respect to x of the function z and d x d t and similarly here the partial derivative of y and then d y d t. So, what do we get here del z over del x. So, z was x y and when we differentiate here with respect to x then this will become only y and d x over d t. So, x was cos t. So, we will get here minus sin t. Similarly, here del z over del y will become x and d y over d t which is sin t it will become cos t. So, we get here the y is sin t. So, we have minus sin square t and x was cos t. So, we have cos square t. So, this is the derivative of z with respect to t without substituting into this uh, function and then getting the derivative. So, this we can uh, again simplify to have this cos 2 t. As I said the alternatively we can just substitute here z is equal to x, x is uh, the cos t and then y is uh, sin t. So, now we have z as a function of t and we can get dz over dt as so this we can write first as half of 2 cos t sin t which is sin 2 t and then when we take the differentiation here this will be uh, sin t will be cos 2 t and this 2 will get cancelled. So, we will have this cos 2 t directly as well, but we, we used here the idea of this uh, composite um, differentiation or the differentiation of composite function and with this formula we do not have to substitute the values of these x and y into the function, but directly uh, with the help of the partial derivatives of this z we can get uh, the derivative of z directly with respect to the function um, t. So, again next problem here z is a function of x and y and further it is given that x is a function of two variables now. So, uh, u and v and then we have uh, here y is a function of again of two variables u and v. And then we will show that this uh, partial derivative the difference of this partial derivative here with respect to u and v uh, can be written as x partial derivative uh, of z with respect to x minus the partial derivative of z with respect to y. So, z is a function of x and y. So, with the formula derived above we have a partial derivative of z with respect to u uh, in terms of the partial derivatives of z uh, with respect to x and y and the partial derivative of x with respect to u partial derivative of y with respect to u again. So, if it is u here it will be u there in both the terms here with respect to uh, u of the derivatives x and y. So, in this case so del z over del x. Uh, because this is not given function here z is a just function of x y. So, this partial derivative z with respect to x will come and del x over del u. So, what was x here e power u plus e power minus v. So, if we take that partial derivative with respect to u that means treating v as constant. So, this term will be treated as constant. So, the partial derivative of x with respect to u will become simply e power u which is written here and then del z over del y and del y over del u. So, the y is here e power minus u plus e power uh, v and when we take the partial derivative here with respect to u. So, it will we will get here minus e power minus u which is the term here and now the partial derivative of z with respect to v again the similar formula but instead of uh, u we have v here and then when we take the partial derivative of x with respect to v. So, it is e power minus v. So, we will get minus e power minus v and then we have here uh, y with respect to v. So, this will become e power v which is uh, written here and now since we want to get the uh, difference of these two partial derivatives. So, we will uh, take this difference here and then so del z over del x here this will become plus. 
So, del z over del x when we take common it will be e power u n plus e power minus v. Similarly, here when we take these two terms common with minus sign. So, again e power minus u plus e power v will come as written here and then this e power u plus uh, e power minus v is x and here e power minus u plus e power v is y. So, we get precisely the uh, the desired term here. So, this is x del z over del x and then minus this is y and del z over del y. So, the another part of this lecture is the uh, to define the homogeneous functions. So, what are the homogeneous functions we will learn now. So, an expression in x y is homogeneous of order of order n. Yeah, so, any expression here in x and y of order n, if it can be expressed in this form that x power n and some function of y over x, then we call such a function of uh, homogeneous function of order n. So, this is important this n here. So, if we can bring this x power n and then the rest term can be written as a function of y over x, then we call uh, such expression as a, a homogeneous uh, expression of order n. Or in terms of the functions we can define, so a function f x y is said to be homogeneous of order n if it satisfies. So, we replace here the argument x and y by t x and t y and if we can bring this t power n out of the function that means, this t power n and again the function of uh, x y remain then we again uh, have this uh, uh, the concept of the homogeneous function of order n. So, we will call this such a function a function a homogeneous function of order n. So, these are the examples of the homogeneous function. So, we consider for example, this f x y is equal to a 0 x power n a 0 x power n minus 1 into y again here x power n minus 2 uh, y square and so on a n y power n. So, what we observe that this is a function uh, this is a homogeneous function of order n why order n because if we take this x power n from all these terms outside then what will we will get here this will be a 0 because x power n we have taken out and here we have again x power n taken out. So, 1 x we have to divide. So, a 1 and then y over x it will become. So, here we have taken x power n out again and then this x power minus 2 will remain that means a 2 and then y over x power 2 and so on. Here a n and x n we have taken out. So, this x power n will be in the in the denominator term and in this case again we have here y over x power n. So, all these terms here or this function we can denote as the function of y power x because this y power x appears together in all the terms. So, we can consider uh, this function here as a function of y over x and then x power n is sitting outside therefore, this is a function of uh, homogeneous function of order n. Similarly, if we consider this one f x y is equal to square root y plus square root x over y plus x. In this case also we can write down this as x power uh, something and, uh, and the rest we can uh, consider as the function of y over x. And this is simple because we can take here square root x out and here we will take x out and in this case. So, here is square root x over x and then inside here we have a square root y over x plus this 1 and here also y over x plus 1. So, now this one here this expression we can consider as the function of y over x and then what is together here x power minus half. So, this we can write down as x power minus half and some function of y over x because in all these terms y over x uh, comes together. So, we can uh, say that this is a this is some function of y over x and in this case as we see here x power minus half. So, this is a homogeneous function of order minus half. 
So, what is the importance of these homogeneous functions? We will see in the next slide. So, based on these uh, order, uh, for example, here it was n or here minus half, we can have some formula for the derivative term in terms of this n. So, precisely what uh, it is called the Euler's theorem on homogeneous function and it says if z is a homogeneous function of x and y of order n and these partial derivatives exist and so on. So, then we have uh, this uh, expression here x partial derivative of z with respect to x y the partial derivative of z with respect to y will be equal to n z. So, we do not have to compute this separately if we know that this is a homogeneous function then x uh, z x y z y will be simply n z and for all x y point in the domain of the order uh, domain of the function here. So, given that z is equal to f x y is a homogeneous function. So, if it is a homogeneous function in that case we can write down uh, wait a minute. So, here if it is a homogeneous function of uh, x and y of order n. So, we can write down that this x power n and g y over x and then we uh, know already how to differentiate with respect to x. So, we can do that. So, here when we take the partial derivative of this with respect to x. So, what we will get here we have to differentiate. So, n x power n minus 1 and this is remain as it is here product rule. So, and then x power n as it is and we differentiate this g o y over x which is g prime y over x. So, the derivative of g with respect to its argument g prime uh, y over x and then here the y over x will be differentiated with respect to x that will give us here minus y over uh, x square. So, in this case now if we Uh, simplify this a bit. So, here we have n x power n minus 1 and g uh, y over x and then here we can uh, have this minus sign there. So, y and n x power n minus 2 and the g prime y over x and the partial derivative of z with respect to y we can get again uh, we have to differentiate now with respect to y. So, x power n will be treated as constant and we have to just differentiate this term. So, we have g prime y over x and then this y over x the derivative with respect to y the par, uh, will be just 1 over x the partial derivative of y over x with respect to uh, y will be 1 over x. And then if we add these two terms with the product of x here and y there what we will get. So, we have multiplied here by x. So, we will get here x power n and here x power n minus 1 and here we have multiplied by y. So, this is exactly here n x power n and minus y x power n minus 1 and in this case we have x power n and then we have multiplied here by by uh, y term. So, this is x power n minus 1 and we have multiplied by y and then these two terms will get cancelled and we have here n x power n g y over x and what was x power n g y over x? This was uh, z or the function f x y. So, here these terms cancel out and then we get simply n into z term. So, n and this is z here and these two gets cancelled. So, the problem number 3. So, here we have a u which is uh, given as 10 inverse x cube plus y cube over x minus y x is not equal to y because this is not defined as x is equal to y and then we show that x del u over del x plus y del u over del y is equal to sin 2 x and in this case. So, again uh, but we should note that this given function tan inverse y q plus x cube over x minus y is not a homogeneous function because of this tan inverse. We cannot bring x power something and the rest we cannot write in terms of y over x. But what we notice that this argument of this tan inverse that means x cube plus y cube over x minus y that is a homogeneous function and we will make use of 
of this because we can define here z as 10 u because if we take this 10 to the left hand side we will get 10 u is equal to x q plus y q over x minus y and now this z here is a function of is a homogeneous function of order 2 because here we can write down as x square. So, x cube we have taken common in the numerator and x here from the denominator. So, we will have x square and this will become uh, 1 plus y over x cube. So, this is 1 here. So, it is 1 plus y over x whole cube and then uh, we have 1 minus y over x. So, this is a homogeneous function of order 2. And then we can apply the Euler's theorem on this function z. So, applying the Euler's theorem on z is equal to 10 u. So, this uh, will give us 2 times the z and z was 10 u. So, we get here the x x and then uh, del z over del u. So, we need to see what is this one here del z over del u. So, we have z is equal to 10 u. So, del z over del x here will be uh, the sec square u and del u over del x. The partial derivative of z with respect to x here the we will take exactly uh, the partial derivative of z with respect to x, but it is given in terms of u. So, we will get the sec square u and then del u over del x. So, here then y and similarly we have del z over del y. So, we have here 10 uh, will become sec square u and del u over del y is equal to 2 times z. So, z is 10 u and then we have here x the sec u is common here we can bring to the right hand side. So, we get x and del u over del x plus this y del u over uh, del y and the sec u goes there as uh, cos square u. So, this is uh, 2 10 u and then here sec square u will be in the denominator which will become cos square. So, here sin u over cos u for 10 and this is cos square u. So, this gets cancelled we have 2 sin u cos u which is assigned to u. So, we get this uh, desired quantity as x del u over del x plus y del u over del y is equal to sin u. So, here the important point is that this u was not a homogeneous function, but by defining this as z is equal to tan u which is x cube plus y cube over x minus y it becomes homogeneous and then we have applied uh, the Euler's result on z and noting this z is equal to 10 u we have uh, computed here partial derivatives of z with respect to x and, and y and then we get the desired result. Okay, so, uh, generalization of this Euler's result says that so this was in, in case of uh, the first order partial derivatives, but we do have results in case of the second order partial derivatives as well and which is uh, the extension of this which says that x square the second order partial derivative 2 x y the mixed term y square again second order derivative with respect to y is equal to n n minus 1 uh, z for all x y in the domain of the function. So, this is the generalization of this uh, result and now we will uh, have this one uh, problem on this. So, suppose we have z is equal to x y a function of y over x and plus g y over x and where this f and g are two times differentiable function and then we will evaluate this expression here for z. So, again the same problem the z is not a homogeneous function of uh, x and y, but here this is a homogeneous function and the second g is also a homogeneous function because we can write down as it is directly given in terms of y over x. So, what we take here we take z is equal to u 1 plus u 2 the first term here we take as u 1 and here we will take as u 2 that means this u 1 is x y and f y over x and u 2 is g y over x. So, this is a function of uh, homogeneous function of order 2 because this we can again write down as 
uh, x square and y over x and this f y over x. So, this is a function of y over x and then we have x square there. So, therefore, the order is 2 and in this case this g is a function of y over x and here the, there is no term of x. So, x power 0. So, this is a homogeneous function of order 0. So, well we have u 1 homogeneous function of order 2, uh, u 2 a homogeneous function of order 0 and z was as uh, u 1 plus u 2, u 1 is given by this, u 2 is given by this. So, the Euler's theorem we can apply on u 1 and u 2 because they are the homogeneous functions of order 2 and 0. So, on u 1 for second derivative theorem it says 2 times, so n is 2. So, 2 times and n minus 1 and then the, the u 1, so n n minus 1 u 1. So, this order was 2. So, we get 2 into 1 into u 1 and this u 1 uh, we know already it is x y f y over x, we will substitute later. And then for u 2 because that is also a homogeneous function of order 0 and because of that order 0 here right hand side we will get 0 term because here it is n n minus 1 and because n is 0 the order is 0. So, this will become 0 there and now we have these two uh, expressions directly without uh, computing these derivatives here we have used this Euler's theorem and we can add them because we want to get this result in terms of z, z is u 1 plus u 2. So, if we add these two, so we have x square and uh, this will become as the partial derivative with respect to 2 the second order u 1 plus u 2 here u 1 plus u 2 here also u 1 plus u 2 and that is z and now equal to here 2 u 1 plus 0. So, 2 and u 1, so plus 0, so we get only 2 u 1 and u 1 is x y f y over x. So, we get this result 2 times x y f uh, function of y over x of this expression here. So, coming to the conclusion we have learned today the differentiation of composite functions which was very useful when z is a gi uh, given function of x y and x is uh, and y they are the function, function of t. So, in that case we can directly compute the derivative of z with respect to t by this formula and then this is generalization of this one that x and y they may be functions of u v and in that case also we can compute the partial derivatives now of uh, z with respect to u and the partial derivative of z with respect to v by these formulas. And then the Euler's theorem for homogeneous functions we have learned that if z is a homogeneous function uh, then we can uh, have this uh, for homogeneous function of order n then it will be uh, here the nz. So, x partial derivative with respect to x plus y partial derivative with respect to y will be equal to nz or there was a generalization that we can also get these uh, second order derivatives as n n minus 1 into z when this z is a uh, homogeneous function of x and y of order n. So, these are the references used for uh, preparing these lectures and uh, thank you very much.